people want fulfillment. Well, it takes a lifetime of effort for most human beings that things that they pursue will not and cannot bring fulfillment. Moving to a place where you can handle any kind of challenge simply means it's giving you the freedom to do what you want. Because there is no the God, there is no incarnation. Avatar means a repeat performance. the same aspiration of human fulfillment. There are so many efforts, so many different types of activity in the world. Whether one is going to the temple or to the bar, seeking God or drink or drug, one is seeking peace or war, one is seeking trinkets of life, another wants to go to heaven. Essentially, the pursuit is same. People want fulfillment. Well, it takes a lifetime of effort for most human beings that things that they pursue will not and cannot bring fulfillment. Samyama is not an effort to fulfill yourself, but to remove the ingredients which cause unfulfilled condition within you. There is a process in your hands right now. Where you will take this process is in your hands. But it is such a potent and alive process, a very live and potent process that if you give yourself to it, it does things that you've not imagined possible ever. about spiritual process being fragile. If you ask me, your spiritual process is more often challenged here in the ashram than in some other city. It is challenged and it's also supported, that's important. You simply challenge, people may feel defeated. It must be constantly challenged and it must be also supported and nursed. Both are needed. As I said, some nursing is also needed, some challenge is also needed, both are needed. There's no challenge, just nursing, you will grow up very weak. Only challenge, no nursing, you may break. It's a balance. Is there a perfect balance? There's no perfect balance, everybody balances somehow. So, uh, where you feel most uncomfortable, you stay there that'll be good for you. 
that is if you want to grow quickly. If you want to grow slowly, be where it's most comfortable. It's taken a lot of effort to constantly design every situation like that, that there is nourishment and there is challenge, there is nourishment and challenge from being a Isha's Anga to become Isha. That means wherever you go, it's the same thing, doesn't matter. You're in the middle of a marketplace, you're like this only. You can participate in everything but untouched by anything. So this is a simple test for yourself. If you miss anything, not just people, anything. Right now, uh, anything that we are used to, food, comfort, this or that, we thoroughly enjoy it. But when it's not there, we don't miss it. When you don't have it, if you're in the same condition as when you have it, this is a good indication. That means you are moving from a nursery to face any kind of challenge. Moving to a place where you can handle any kind of challenge simply means it's giving you the freedom to do what you want. Whatever we want, we can take it up and do it. of God. No, you must understand this. See, uh, the idea of the God only comes from the three Abrahamic religions, that there is the God somewhere, one authority. Nowhere else does it exist, not at all in this culture. We called any being who is evolved beyond what we thought was a normal human being as a deva, that means he's like godlike. Because I think I've spoken about this, you know, people call Tendulkar a cricketing god. Everybody want to come and fall at your feet and things is because when they see somebody that is evolved beyond what they think is normal, what they think is normal, then that person, they are saying, he is divinely endowed, something more than what we have. There is no the God, because there is no the God, there is no incarnation. Avatar means a repeat performance. <laughs> yes, avatar means it's come once again in, in a certain form. But does not mean the God has come. If somebody is of a certain kind, they say, oh, he is Shiva's incarnation. You must understand this. In this culture, for example, they were talking about Ramana Maharshi. People used to refer to him as Bhagwan. Bhagwan generally literally translates to like almost like God. 
this way, Sanskrit, somebody, tell me what's Bhagwan? how does it break into two words, you know? A fortunate being, that's what they're trying to say, okay. But generally, these are the words that are there to describe God. Tamil, Anna? Kada means going inwards Oh, that's nice. I didn't realize that, I thought kadwale, kadwale and so like <laughs> If that is the meaning, it's fantastic that they're calling, using a word for God as something that is within. So the dictionary it has been said like that, one who had overcome the self or the existence. If that is a dictionary meaning, it's a wonderful, absolutely fantastic meaning. Always they're referring to God as one who's transcended his own self. Fantastic. So, so these are the kind of the words that are there. There is no the God anywhere in these languages or in this culture. So, when you… in the question when you say, how did the incarnations of God come here? They didn't come here, they were here and they transcended their self and they became Kadavul. Mm.